Keep laughing. Keep laughing. It'll feel real funny, huh? If you go, if any one of you that doesn't respect me or what I'm doing or what I've been doing for the last three months since it's been announced, you're going against a guy like this, you have a big dump in your pants. Talk to him, Peter. I'm Hurricane Peter McNeely from Medfield, Mass. On Saturday night, watch me kick Tyson's ass. But if you haven't made your pay-per-view arrangements yet, make them soon. Because remember what happens when I wrap you in my cocoon. Peter, we have you for just a moment before you go out into the ring. Your thoughts before you get in with Mike Tyson. This is for my grandfathers, my grandmothers, my father, my mother, Curly, my three brothers, last but not least, Snobby. Oh, hey, hey, hey. Mr. McNeely, what was it that you told your son? And last but not least, Ned Field! Do the instruction in the dressing room one time. This is Nevada State rules only. Any quick check yourself at all times, I've got a tough, clean fight. Any questions from McNeely's corner? Any questions from Mr. Tyson's corner? Let's get it on! comes right at Mike Tyson. from Brooklyn burst onto the scene, making his way through the whole division of heavyweights and knocking everyone out one by one. This fighter owned an excellent attack style and elusive speed, which is thus far second to none. Powerful blows with a ruthless killer instinct. Iron Mike Tyson. Today, we will show you the legendary Iron Mike and his most brutal and aggressive knockouts. July 1985, Mike Tyson versus John Alderson. Tyson came forward in the opening round with a bit of headhunting against this much taller opponent. Alderson mostly looked to evade and occasionally pumped out a rangy jab or a straight right hand. So Frank Cappuccino will have a busy night tonight, and this sixth rounder may not last very long with a kind of shot there, a left hook right to the face. At the instruction. Construction of his corner, Tyson added more work to the body in round two and landed at a higher rate. A pair of right hands knocked out Alderson's mouthpiece at one minute sixteen seconds. Alderson down on this round. They survive as he goes down again at the bell. 
He's got to get up. Uh, fighter cannot be strapped till he says, okay? He is, and he goes into his corner. This will be a win to let everybody know that Donnie Long is back. October 1985, Mike Tyson versus Donnie Long. As always, Tyson started aggressively and threw punches to the head, sending Long down after 37 seconds. Despite coming back, Long was sent to his knees twice before the referee waved an end to the bout after 1 minute 28 seconds. November 1985, Mike Tyson versus Eddie Richardson. From the very beginning of the fight, it became clear that it wouldn't last long. Richardson held his hands low and tried to keep Tyson at a sluggish jab. As soon as he managed to hit his third blow, Tyson shot a long right to the head at the jump. It was not noticeable that Richardson was greatly shocked by the blow. After sitting a little on the floor, Eddie decided to get up. Tyson immediately tried to finish off his opponent. Nevertheless, Richardson tried his best to hang on to the end of the round and not let himself get hit. I see right now a major flaw and problem in, in Mike Tyson's career, and that's going to be to have a fight that lasts long enough to get some good footage on it. I'm telling you what, it's hard to do. Mike Tyson, without a doubt. January 1986, Mike Tyson versus Mike Jameson. From the first seconds of the fight, Tyson shot a great uppercut in response to Jameson's right hit. Note that left jab out and keep this little guy off you. Here comes Tyson. Jameson worse tonight than he usually has been and knows that Charles the Truth Williams After the next clinch, Joe Cortez made another comment to Jameson. Hardly having received the command to continue, Tyson attacked the opponent with his most powerful nine strike combination. Tyson's tired namesake could not endure such pressure and fell to the floor. However, he quickly got up and was eager to continue the fight. Having a four-shot combination on the body with a transfer to the head, Tyson forced his opponent to fall on his knee. Jameson got up once again and wanted to continue. However, Joe Cortez decided it would be better for him to stop the fight. says he wants to go on but the referee Joe Cortez says it is over here in the fifth round June 1986 Mike Tyson versus Reggie Gross from the very beginning of the fight it was obvious that Reggie Gross was afraid of Tyson he hit with a jab and immediately jumped back At one point, Reggie suddenly exploded forward and held a 15-strike combination. He even managed to hook his opponent with an uppercut exactly on the jaw. But Mike Tyson waited for the right moment in a hail of blows, hit his crown blow from the left side and sent Gross to the ring floor. The audience roared with delight. You can't even walk. You're worried about 
August 1986, Mike Tyson vs. Jose Ribalta. Ribalta was the first heavyweight boxer who walked the entire distance with Iron Mike. The first round, Mike Tyson started with Jose Ribalta's powerful left-handed straight. He tried to develop an attack from the left side to the head, but his opponent dodged to the left and held up a glove. October 1987, Mike Tyson vs. Tyrell Biggs. Only two months prior to his match with Biggs, Tyson had defeated Tony Tucker by unanimous decision to unify all three major heavyweight championships and become the undisputed heavyweight champion. Though many had hoped this would lead to a match with heavyweight champion Michael Spinks, Spinks remained reluctant to face Tyson. As such, Tyson instead chose to face one of his mandatory challengers. 1984 Olympic gold medalist Tyrell Biggs, who was undefeated since turning pro. Oh, that's that was a tremendous left hand. Oh, wow. oh this, this is it. He is gone right now. He has no legs at all. And 10 seconds to go in a round. There's a left hand. He's down again. It's over. It's all over. And it wasn't even close. Here's the final knockdown now. So I, I think it's the power. June 1988. Mike Tyson versus Michael Spinks. This bout represented a contrast of styles. With Tyson's speed and devastating power. Up against the unorthodox style of Spinks who rarely looks impressive, but has always found a way to win. Larry Holmes, the only man to have faced both fighters, predicted a Tyson win by knockout in two to three rounds. August 1995, Mike Tyson versus Peter McNeely. This match marked the return of Mike Tyson to professional boxing after over four years away, due to his 1991 arrest and subsequent conviction for rape in 1992, which led to Tyson serving three years in prison. The fight lasted only 89 seconds, with Tyson earning an easy victory via disqualification. into the fight, McNeely on the canvas. Mills Lane had stopped that nonsense because they were starting to butt heads. Oh, Tyson with a left hook, a right hook, and that down goes McNeely again. McNeely's hurt this time, Steve. He's very hurt. He can barely stand up. March 1996, Mike Tyson versus Frank Bruno II. Bruno, at the time, had been a professional boxer for over 13 years. He was a former European heavyweight champion and had received several shots at the world heavyweight title over the course of his career. And this is what Bruno expected. He said he's not looking for the Tyson who fought McGillian Mathis. Here's a combination uppercut by Tyson. Tyson 